Senator Ricketts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, Mr. Kostelanchik, I'm sure you know today is opening day for the Cubs. We've got the Brewers at home. So uh, uh, hopefully we start off the season well. On a more somber note, all of you are going to face the challenges the Chinese Communist Party poses. Uh, President Xi has said that essentially he wants to be the world dominating power by 2049, and I don't think that's in any of our interests uh, anywhere around the world that that's going to be a good thing. Um, Ms. Terrio, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Guyana. You know, obviously they're a, a democracy and a friend, which is a welcome thing in that part of the in our, in our part of the world. It's so close to us, and as we mentioned um, in 2015, Exxon Mobil made a discovery of oil there, and I think that that on a per capita basis, that only Kuwait has more oil than than Guyana now, and we certainly want to encourage that development in a responsible way. I think you said earlier that American companies provide that reliability, correct? Um, my understanding is Guyana Shore Base, a private company based in Georgetown, asked the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, for help in upgrading the Guyanese infrastructure. And IDB proposed $180 million in debt financing um, for the project. Uh, the Biden administration vetoed that, though. And the reasoning is they didn't want to back oil and gas projects. And I think that's short-sighted, given that China has no such restrictions in aggressively signing contracts uh, to build infrastructure in Guyana and around the world. And certainly, I think we would all agree that we're going to do a better job than that. And of course, contrast with the administration then provided sanctions relief to Venezuela's authoritarian Maduro regime to boost oil production. Um, what, is your, what are your thoughts on the Biden administration's decision to block the IDB, 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 IDB loan? Thank you very much, Mr. Ranking Member. Um, that decision was made in March 20 of 22. Um, I would say that uh, things have changed significantly since the war on the Ukraine has dragged on and energy security is a real uh, concern and is a significant issue. Um, what I would do if confirmed is to make sure that there is a level playing field for US companies in Guyana. I think that is um, our entree into ensuring that uh, China does not take over this industry. Um, I think it's incredibly important that we remain the preferred partner in Guyana, whether it be the U.S. government for security cooperation or U.S. companies for oil and gas development. Um, that is something that um, I would work diligently to ensure. So do you think blocking the IDB loan was against our strategic interests? Um, blocking the IDB loan was in line with the current Biden administration, um, their priority to not contribute further to oil and gas development of fossil fuels. Um, I think that because that vote is no longer an issue, um, that we can only move forward and work to ensure that U.S. companies uh, are given a level playing field in, in the country. So do you think given uh, what I hear you saying is because of changing circumstances, you think that the circumstances, well, the, the world's changed since the invasion of Ukraine. Do you think if that were to come up again that the Biden administration should allow that loan to go forward for a U.S. company to develop the resources there? Um, I wouldn't want to speculate on that. Um, I think we'd have to see what the decision would be. Um, a guy on his oil and gas sector is developing very well through uh, private sector uh, investment, and um, I, I can't speculate on what the, the result of that vote would be, sir. Do you know what Guyana's uh, reaction to the decision to block the IDB loan was? Uh, they, were, they were quite displeased. Do you believe that Guyana views um, the U.S. as an unreliable partner and would turn to China because of that? No, sir, I don't think that's the case. And uh, they've shown time and time again that we are the preferred partner, both the U.S. government and U.S. companies. Great. Um, and maybe we'll have some more uh, uh, time to follow up on some of the other things here as well, but I want to go to Ms. Yasashak with regard to, again, I'm staying on the topic of the CCP and the Solomon Islands. Uh, my understanding is that uh, China signed an agreement with the Solomon Islands with regard to the naval bases there, and this was a surprise to the Biden administration. What would you be able to do with regard to that agreement to be able to make sure that we continue to have a strong relationship with the Solomon Islands? and and is there a way that we can, that's a five-year agreement is my understanding, is there a way that we can convince the Solomon Islands not to renew that because obviously having the Chinese Navy so close to our allies in Australia and to shipping lanes is, a, is certainly a big issue. Thank you, Senator Ricketts, for that question. Um, 
the the agreement was signed and Solomon Islands has has confirmed and has stated that they are not going to be locating uh, PRC bases in the country. But what we will be doing is providing additional security assistance through different ways. We have a shiprider agreement with the Solomon Islands. We're looking at providing additional um, security capacity building, um, which we think is more sustainable and will ensure the sovereignty of the country rather than relying on foreign um, forces. So I think that there's a lot of discussion, and I'm committed, if confirmed, to continue that discussion to ensure the safety of uh, the region, but also um, ensuring that uh, we become the partner of choice as well. Thank you.